Welcome back to Retrobytes. It's time for another old ThinkPad. Yep, I've got quite a few. This one is the ThinkPad 360CS. It's got a color screen, you might have noticed. The processor is um, 33 megahertz. There's four megabytes of RAM. It's running DOS and I don't know if you can hear that. It's a little squeaky. No, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Not, not the best sound. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking, what, what do I want to do with this? You know, this is, as you can see, it's got stickers all over the um, keyboard this was used as a, a, a cash register at some point in its life before I got it and, uh, um, so I was thinking you know what would be a fun episode what would be fun to do with this thing and um, I got to thinking about it and this thing aligns pretty closely with uh, the minimum system requirements for Windows 95 uh, which I think is 4 megabytes of RAM and uh, 20 megahertz or better CPU uh, so this one, you know, it's 33 megahertz. So uh, I think it, uh, I think it might run uh, Windows 95. Um, the other requirement is that it run uh, DOS 3 something or greater. And it looks like we've got five installed. So I think I can install um, Windows 95 on here. Switch into coffee. <clears throat> coffee. So. Uh, last time I had one of these old ThinkPads out, um, the only real way I had to put files on it was um, with a floppy drive. Um, I mean, that was the way things were done back in the day, right? And I don't even know if the floppy drive on this works. I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, because in that video, Oops. In that video, one of my astute viewers was like, hey man, go out on eBay and get yourself a um, compact flash to PCMCIA adapter. So that's exactly what I did. And I've got this um, one gigabyte compact flash here, so I want to see if this is going to work in this laptop. Let's find out. I'm just going to plug it in here real quick. And reboot. Yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix Card Manager, I think. So, yeah. So, PCMCIA Socket 1 installed at E. Let's see if that works. I think I put that card in the second socket. Yeah, so here's my compact flash drive. There's nothing on it. Um, cool. So this could work. I'm going to um, have to put, uh, have to get the Windows 95 um, installation files. I don't have the floppies, um, but what I could do is um, just go out to the internet to uh, the Wayback Machine or, or um, archive.org and, and download Windows 95. Um, so all I'll need for that a laptop that's connected to the internet. So I'm going to pull out my modern ThinkPad, which has internet capabilities. Yeah, as you can see right there, you are now connected to the internet. Ooh, that's exciting. All right. Uh, it's still loading. It might, it might look a little better. <laughs> yeah, this is this is my modern thing. <laughs> All right, it's finally done downloading. Um, so it's here on the. Uh, Compact flash ready to go. Took forever to. I definitely did not download it with a flat, faster computer and then 
copy it over with a flash drive. That would be cheating. Yeah. And beep beep yourself. But that looks really bad on camera. It doesn't look that bad in person, for what it's worth. Okay. I don't remember which port I plugged it into. Ha! There's the files. Uh, let's see if this works as easily as I think it will. Text. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Uh, I'll have to think about this for a minute. Okay, so I formatted the compact flash in here under DOS, and I brought it over to another PC, copied over all the Windows 95 files, and now it looks like there's no file corruption, so that was the key. <sighs> okay, let's do setup. Let's see here. You guys read all of that, right? Me too. Oh, squeaking at me again. So, I'm not getting far with Windows setup. I keep hitting this uh, error. Um, I tried recopying the files to the compact flash just to make sure that they weren't corrupt. They're not. So, uh, to me that means that I don't have enough memory. Um, you might recall that this system has 4 megabytes of RAM, which is supposed to be the minimum required RAM for Windows 95. One of the great things about IBM laptops of this era was uh, serviceability. Um, if you wanted to service your IBM laptop, like you didn't need any screwdrivers or anything like that, and if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, you would buy one of these RAM cards. Um, these are about the size of a PCMCIA card, but the pinout is different, so it doesn't go in to the PCMCIA slot. Um, on this model, it actually goes under the hood. Anyway, um, back to this. The Under the hood here we've got the hard drive uh, where the battery would be if it had one. And then here's the floppy disk drive. So if we take this out... Um, here's our memory card. This goes here. Now it kind of looks like there's like a, a tray that's supposed to be here to support this card. I don't have that tray, but it does plug in and just kind of, it'll just have to hover there. I know that's terrible, but uh, it's the best I've got. So I'll go ahead and button this thing back up and see if that did the trick. Come on, baby, big money, big money. Wow, look at that. 12 megabytes. It didn't even have to think about it. It's just like, oh look, this guy's installed a RAM card. Excellent. So, man, that's fantastic. Old IBMs, they're so cool. Like, could you imagine if it was that easy to upgrade the RAM in your modern laptop? Just open up the uh, hood, slide in a memory card, close the hood, and boot it up. Oh, so cool. All right, so let's get back to setting up windows here. Uh, set up. All right, this is further than we made it last time. Uh, yeah, it looks like the reason it was failing earlier is just not enough RAM. Thank you. 
All right, well, um, Windows 95 is running. Uh, it takes a long time to boot with only four megabytes of RAM, uh, which is what it has right now. Um, it looks like it's um, running in MS-DOS compatibility mode, which I guess isn't too surprising since um, this originally was running DOS and we just put Windows on top of it. Um, but it looks like we might be able to um, get out of DOS compatibility mode if we remove this PCMATA config.sys. Um, I'm going to try that and see what happens. Um, it, it really is just woo, so slow. Let's see how long it takes to open the C drive here, just as an example. Still. Okay, I'll just pause this. <laughs> mm, okay, so disabling the PCMCA drivers in config.sys fixed our file system and memory uh, to not be in DOS compatibility mode anymore, which I think means 16-bit. Anyway, uh, the only thing left is that my PCMCIA devices aren't there. Um, the Windows Help says clicker to enable, so I'm going to see where that takes me. Uh, oh wow, is that a hard disk controller? I wonder if it's talking about the um, compact flash in the PCMCIA slot. Um, you can check the floppy drive, but it's right here, so I'm not sure you're going to find anything there, Windows. There it is, looking good. Okay. Your system is configured for optimal performance. Isn't that special? Alright, it's time for a boot time test, so... We're gonna see how quickly it boots with 12 mic megabytes of RAM and then how quickly it boots with the minimum required by Windows 95, four megabytes. So this is the 12 megabyte boot. Um, stop the timer when the welcome screen comes up. One minute. One minute and five seconds with 16 megabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and shut it down and we'll see how quickly we can boot with four megabytes of RAM. All right, we're booting up now with four megabytes of RAM see how it goes. One minute ten. Uh-oh. I was encountered an error when backing up the system registry. Make sure you have enough free space on the drive for three copies of the file. This test is ruined. I don't think I'm out of hard drives. Oh, you know, it's probably swapping a lot more now. Maybe the drive is full. Uh, just thinking about it. Holy cow, man. <laughs> Needs more RAM. There we go. Okay. C drive. Since 46 megs free. Hmm. All right, uh, we're gonna try the four megabyte of RAM boot one more time. Last time I tried it, the <laughs> there's an error message about not being able to back up the user's registry file. So if that um, pops up again, I'll just dismiss it as quickly as I can. Um, you know, maybe. Maybe uh, Microsoft might have been stretching the truth a little when they said that uh, you could run Windows 95 on a system with 4 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> there we 
here it is, a minute and 30 right on the dot. So, honestly, after having used this for a little bit, um, four megabytes of RAM is pretty much unusable by any stretch of the imagination. Like, you can see the disk is idling now. It's not really doing anything. Watch how long it takes to open my computer. It's like... Come on. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, close enough. Close enough. So, I, all right, there it is, okay, okay, it says it's got all these system resources free, but I, I don't know, yeah, it's just really slow, you can tell it's doing a lot of swapping, um, so, meh, yeah, I think, um, for myself, I'm gonna put a RAM card back in and, you know, use it like that. Uh, maybe in the next video I'll, I'll put on some DOS games and see if this thing's any good at DOS games. Um, you can see that the LCD, um, it's got some ghosting. Now that's not a pointer trail. Uh, I don't know how well that comes up on camera, but it looks like there's a pointer trail enabled. It's not, it's just the LCD panel refreshing real slowly. Um, but yeah, I think th th this'll do it for this video. You know, I, I wanted to see if Windows 95 would run with uh, as close as, to the minimum specs as I could get anyway. Um, you know, with this uh, 486, 33 megahertz system and uh, four megabytes of RAM. Um, it's pretty close to the minimum. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it works, but it wouldn't run the installer. <laughs> I had to install additional RAM just to install Windows, and then I could remove the RAM and run Windows with 4 megabytes of RAM. So technically, I don't know, Microsoft, they said recommended was 8. I think minimum is probably 8. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Retrobytes. I'll, um, I'll catch you guys in the next one.